Hi, so this is a short video for this user on Reddit. Thank you for your question. I, I think that um, I, I'd like to answer this question just because I am super interested in the CMS space as it pertains to JavaScript, open source, headless CMSs. So that's quite a, a bunch of um, um, buzzwords, but basically it means that open source, it's stuff that's on GitHub that you can download and install wherever you like. Um, and um, it's headless so that you use a separate front end from the back end. So basically the, the CMS provides the API and the interface for creating content and content types. Um, and that, um, yeah, that you can go ahead and edit. Now there are, as you've mentioned, a couple of different options and you liked Ghost. Um, there is, I just wanted to point out a few things about Ghost and a few of the other CMSs just to give you a head start and anybody else who, who might want to benefit from this information. Um, just a little prerequisite. First of all, I've used Heroku for most of these um, examples. Heroku is, is a great little platform and I love it. It means that I don't have to pay for um, demos that I'm I'm using. Um, they can sleep. And in fact, if you've got a very small client that doesn't update their, their content very often, you can put them on Heroku because your app will just go to sleep. You won't need to pay for it um, ad infinitum. And it means that um, yeah, you, you get a good deal out of it, and it's a, it's a nice interface. Um, things do change on Heroku. Like, I've had to spin up a new Strappy demo here because my other one lost its connection to the Postgres uh, database, and it's broken, so I've, I've lost access to my site. So just watch out for those little gotchas like that. But Heroku is a great little platform, and I, and I really recommend it. Okay, so your question about Ghost. Now, what you, as you're coming from a WordPress sort of um, WordPress world, when you install WordPress, you get content types and fields ready for you. What I mean by that is you've got pages and posts like Ghost already has. Um, and you can, of course, do <laughs> write your post posts and you can write your pages as you want. However, Say your client or whoever you're building a site for says, oh, I don't want just pages and posts. I want I want products or or I want um, um, FAQs or something like that. How do you do that? And, and that is the question that I have with Ghost. Um, apparently, there is a way of doing it. Um, it. It's a little bit basic, though. What you've got to do is um, you've got to create a tag here that is specific and then filter that tag when you're building your front end and render it as a different. So it's not really a separate content type because you won't, you'll still, still see pages and posts here, nothing else. You won't see a separate tag. So so to me, that's not really a separate content type. <laughs> um, so so that's what, that's the argument I have with Ghost. I mean, I, I love the platform. The interface is beautiful. It's a real joy to use. Um, it has got that limitation, however, that you can't, it is not easy to create new post types. And the other limitation here, I'm just going to go into this post here. Um, the, as you can see, the in editing interface is just, it's just beautiful. And you've got like um, O embeds um, and, and things you might want there pretty, pretty nicely. But say, again, the person who you're building the, these sites for says, oh, well, I, I, that's fine. But now I want to have like a um, an extra field here. I want to link it to my new posts and have like um, and have things and a separate field here or in the little widget at the side for, for something else that's going to render on the side. Say I wanted to have a separate introduction field as well as the excerpt. How do you do that? You, you can't. It's not, it's not very easy. There is a way of doing it, so I'm told, um, but it's in the code base and I can't, I can't really figure it out because um, the other thing about Ghost is it's built on Ember. I don't know Ember. It's not a very common library these days, but uh, it is possible if you know that and you're willing to, to get your, your tools out and start start coding away. Otherwise, it's a great little system. And I and I really favor Ghost's, Ghost for s simple blogs like, like this one I've got here. And for if you have um, somebody who wants subscribers, like it's got a great subscriber platform for emailing out and, and cert certain people who have subscribed will be able to see your articles, whereas some people who are not subscribed won't, and that kind of thing. So that's really versatile. Um, however, the the rest of Ghost is 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 geared towards that market and that market alone. It's not really meant to be a customizable CMS. Okay. Strappy is the other one I mentioned. And I I love Strappy, and I'm, I, this is the first time I've seen that new interface actually, but it's really really good. 
as you see here, it doesn't have any content types by default, right? It just has the user. So I went in, created this, and I thought, okay, now I, I want to create my posts, right? I, I want to have a title and I want to have a excerpt, I want to have the body and I want to have a featured image. Can't do that. And the reason is this is hosted at the moment. This is the production build of the application. So if I wanted to edit this, I have to clone it down to my local copy. I have to either get Postgres or it used to use SQL Lite locally. So I'd have to figure out how that works and then create my content types, which then generates some code. And then you can push that to Heroku or wherever you're hosting. And there you have your production content types, which is great if you don't mind doing that. So your users can't ever create or maintain or change the, the content type model. Say they wanted to say, say they, they came to you with that same issue that I mentioned with Ghost, right? They said, oh, I, we want products now. They can't do it. You have to do it for them. Yeah, so which is, which is why I think Strapi is great if you're gonna be managing this thing regularly, maintaining it because it does have updates. Uh, like on Ghost, you saw this is the end of life version three. So I'm going to have to update this at some point. Strappy is moving pretty quickly as well. Uh, so and as I mentioned, it's lost its connection with this. My my instance has lost connection with its um, Postgres database. So I'm going to have to fiddle around with that. Again, this is on Heroku, so it does sleep. But otherwise, you need to put it up on on a paid uh, Heroku instance or on DigitalOcean or something like that, depending on your preference. Now, the other one that I mentioned is Webany. Now, disclaimer, I work for Webany. But I only work for them because I love the product. I really thought it had a, a strong future. Webany is different in that I haven't hosted this on Heroku. This is on my AWS account. So it ha when you when you create a new Strapi app, uh, new Webany app, sorry, um, it will it will chat, ask you, you know, what where you know do you want to deploy this now, and it will deploy it for you. Um, but but what I just do is I I create a new app, I deploy it, and then. I don't need to do anything else. It's there because look at this. Here's my models and I create a new model here. Um, pages say. And then I can I can start to build up my content or my I don't need to do that as a developer. I can I can wait until my um, clients do that. And you can restrict the content models based on roles, if you like. So I thought that's just more flexible and, and less management, less headache, really. Uh, the advantage as well of this being on AWS is that, like Heroku, it goes to sleep. It, it's, it's what's called serverless, so that it only, it's only running when you tell it to run, when it's, it's, it's now. But when I exit this, the lambdas, the, the, the functions, the database will all go to sleep and I wanted to pay a thing for it. There is an option with Webany to have a more um, bigger instance. If, if you're just running a couple of content types, like it sounds like you are, you, you just have the what's called the DynamoDB only option. And that will be free, basically, unless you're calling the API a lot. Um, and otherwise, there is a DynamoDB and Elastic search, um, which is a lot more um, powerful. Um, and that is a paid that you have to pay regularly for that. Like it's about, I, I don't know, probably about five quid a month, something, something like that. I can't remember now the details. So, so, so that's, that's Webany. The advantage again with Webany um, <laughs> here is that it has its own file manager. So whereas Ghost and Strapi, if you're putting this up on Heroku, you don't want to save files to your local media center, right? As it, oh, where was it here? Media library. That is not on Heroku. This is connected to my Cloudinary instance. And the reason for that is Heroku doesn't store things in its file system. <laughs> it spins them up a new um, a new sort of server sort of thing when you call it and therefore it sleeps. It's it doesn't have a file system. All right. So you need to have a service like Cloudinary. I'm using the free version here, but I only get one bucket. And so all of my image for all of my sites are, are in there. Um, totally doable might not be great for your clients. And also Cloudinary is past that as a paid service. All right? There are lots of other ones, ImageX and, 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 and the like. Um, just thought I'd make you aware of that. 
The difference with Webony is it's got its, because it's on AWS instead of something like Heroku, it does have its own file manager. So we don't need to pay for a separate file manager. Um, I'm not going to show you that now. But it, yeah, you don't need to have that separate service. It's all included with Webony, which is why one of the other reasons that I, I like it. And it's all cached on a CDN, so you don't need to worry about that kind of thing. Now, the other ones that I haven't mentioned are Directus. Ah, it's finished building. Great. I've, I've just spun this up very quickly just now. So this is my more or less my first exam, my first time using Directus. Let's go in here. I just, I'm just going to see. No. Oh, darn it. I forgot my password. Oh. Anyway, I'm not going to do that now, but do check that out, okay? Um, it's got a lot of reviews. It seems quite nice, and it's maturing. People tend to like it, but I don't know if it's similar to Strappy in that you have to run it locally and then put it up. Also, I couldn't find a one-click install for Heroku. However, Directus does have a cloud option, so you can put it on their cloud. And there are similar options to Heroku in that there's a free one, there's, there's paid versions, depending on usage and how many people i think it is how many members you have the other one is payload now pay payload is um, um an interesting one again it doesn't have a one-click heroku install i think you'll need to configure something like DigitalOcean for it um right that took me a bit of time to start start doing that um depends how much time you've got i'm very time poor i've got kids so um i don't get much time to mess around with this kind of thing anymore um, but that is another option now i do like payloads in interface just the look of it is really really nice um, I would say that it's more similar to Strappy again than it is to uh, Ghost, but you might want to just check it out. All right, I'm just being fair with you because there's a lot of options these days um, to check out and a lot of things to be aware of if you're moving away from WordPress. All right, I hope that's helpful. Um, have fun checking these CMSs out.